So welcome back to my channel, everyone. I, as you know, I am Lena from Pandora Shark and Slater and I are really excited because today we have probably the most specialist of guests on our YouTube channel in the whole Pandora community. We have the Pandora royalty, which is Dora from the Art of Pandora blog um, on our channel today. And as you would know, I am quite new to the YouTube and the Instagram community. So we'll be asking Dora some questions that if you are also a little bit new to the community or you've forgotten a little bit about her story, um, this is a nice kind of recap for those of you who are a little bit like me and Slater who have only joined the community in the last year or so. Um, so welcome, Dora. It is a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you so much. And it's just a good job that no one can see my face because I am bright red with embarrassment. You are too nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Slater and I are also um, very nervous, very excited because, yeah, this is a dream come true for us in our Pandora story. So it's really, really lovely to have you with us. So if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you a few questions that are quite sort of general that are about what interested you in Pandora to begin with, what what inspired you to start your blog, um, and also a few kind of logistical things in terms of how you store your amazing, amazing collection um, and maybe where you're going next. So maybe the first thing we'll, we'll ask you is, what did inspire you to start collecting Pandora in the first place? Well, that's... Um, a good question. I don't think I ever started thinking of myself as a collector. Um, you know, I was just going to get a bracelet. That was it. Um, yeah. <laughs> and my husband will say how he thought that after each event or special moment in my life, after that bracelet was filled, that would be the end. <laughs> he didn't realise that Pandora did multiple bracelets and... They had new collections every year, multiple times during the year, and that this was a never-ending story, literally. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that it, it's kind of a slippery slope. Anyone who starts buying Pandora, it it will start mm -hmm. small. You will have one bracelet, but then you'll get another bracelet <laughs> and another, and yeah, that's how it gets you. So you starts off just a, a regular Pandora girl, I'd say, and then maybe a collector and an addict. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm a testament to this, everyone, because I started very small and, as Dora said, one bracelet and then that was it. The slope became very, as, as you can see, <laughs> as you've seen in the videos, the slope is very slippery very quickly. But, you know, I think, I think it is a fun thing to collect. I also think because I've only just recently discovered the online community, the thing that struck me about it was the fact that it was quite positive, like the positivity, the kindness. You know, I've I've obviously been in other online communities and other Instagram accounts and things like that, and I just I, I've never seen that kind of sisterhood and kindness that um, the Pandora community shares, and I really love the global aspect of it. So. I've got, you know, followers and friends in Mexico and in Poland and in Russia and in the UK and um, it's, yeah, in Asia. It's, it's just so amazing to be connected with that same passion, I think, um, across so many different countries. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And even when maybe an exclusive um, pops up in one country and you can't get hold of it and somebody offers to help you out and you don't really know this person, like in real life, you mm. don't know this person, but you trust them yeah. and, you know, you send mm. them money. <laughs> and and yes. you, you trust them and then they send it to you and it's just like you have yeah. that kind of semi-trust thing going on already because you have that common... Um, I wouldn't just say like love for Pandora, but kind of um, ideal about certain mm. characteristics, you know? So yeah, there's something yeah. very similar going on with that. And I I really appreciate that, that you don't need mm. to, to have met these people physically to be their friends. Yeah. And to understand, yeah, there's, there's that shared understanding. I think that shared kindness, which, which is really beautiful. And yeah, that instantaneous friendship. I don't think I've ever been in a group 
where the friendship was so instantaneous because of this commonality and this common interest. And as you say, the shared values, the shared characteristics too. So that's really, really beautiful. So what actually inspired you to start the Art of Pandora blog? Because we all know how amazing it is. We all go there to see what's coming up next. And, you know, it gives it gave me so much hope during lockdown. You have no idea. <laughs> I'd be on there every day looking at different charms, thinking, oh my gosh, especially because last year was the Pandora 20 charms, the limited edition ones. That that for me, honestly, got me through lockdown. Um, so what's what inspired you to start that process? Well, to start with, I had an Instagram account and I like just taking photos. Um, I appreciated the beauty of Pandora's jewelry and sometimes the stock images wouldn't do the jewelry justice. They'd be a bit too clinical or you just want to create a, your own kind of look your own artistic interpret interpretation of it um, so I started with Instagram and I enjoyed it I enjoyed taking the photographs and so that's kind of how the blog started through Instagram um, I I love hearing about new collections and sharing tips or promotions you know when's going to be a, the best time to get something you've got a sale coming up or well, wait then do this time it's going to be better for you so I think the whole community aspect comes into that wanting to help other people something that I find useful I want to share it I don't want to just have the information for myself um, obviously as some some information as Pandora is a business I can't just tell people straight away I have to respect them um, but yeah. I'll do what I'm allowed to what I'm able to <laughs> um, to be able to be helpful still yeah, I've always respected that about your vlog. You you share w what you are allowed to share and it's still exciting for us because we wouldn't know any of it otherwise. Um, and I also, I absolutely love that you basically cover the whole globe in terms of the regions. Like you cover the regions in price and also in regional exclusives. It's, it's always really interesting to see what's coming out in other countries too for the same season. It is a bit strange being in Australia because... We, our season is obviously, or anywhere in the Southern Hemisphere, I suppose, our season is the opposite one. Mm -hmm. So when Pandora says it's a winter collection, we are about to move into, or where I live, into, you know, summers with 38, 40 degrees Celsius um, heat. And it's, I actually really like that because it means I can kind of have two different bracelets going at the same time. I can have that wintry Christmas bracelet going and then I can also have my Summer Vibes Australian sort of bracelet. So I, I love following the collections that Pandora releases on your blog because then I sort of think about what bracelet design I want. Everyone makes their wish list from your blog. We know that. We see them screen sharing the photos and things like that. So, yeah, it's it's such a valuable asset to the Pandora community and such a great way to connect too. So I know that we all really appreciate it. Um, oh, keep up you. the great work. <laughs> Don't stop. <laughs> um, and I also think that your photographs are just mesmerizing. The When I first started, which wasn't that long ago on Instagram, um, it was your photographs that I saw very, very early. And it was your Instagram that I saw before I found your blog. So um, yeah, your photos are amazing. And your recent me photos made me buy probably more Pandora <laughs> me than I anticipated buying. So. Sorry. <laughs> Which is a good thing too. So that's fine. It's fine. I, I don't, you know, it's, it's voted well for me. So that's been great. So with your extensive and amazing now collection, because as you said, it does snowball into mm -hmm. somewhat of a healthy, healthy addiction, healthy obsession. Yeah. How do you store your treasures? Do you store them by color, by theme, by style? Well, um, I use stackers, which is very mm -hmm. good because just like your Pandora collection grows, the stackers can accommodate by just getting <laughs> another layer and so you don't need to get a whole mm -hmm. new jewellery system or a new jewellery box. And I, I kind of organise um, the layers a little bit by theme or metal type. So I have some that are like all the gold ones have in one um, separate layer. Uh, I don't have a great deal of gold, so that one's not too full up. Um, <laughs> and then I had the same with the rose. And and then with silver, I have a, a layer that's just for Disney. And in each little section, I'll have like this, the different 
and collections like Alice in Wonderland. Um, some are just like the, the mini and Mickey ones. Um, so I'll kind of have them in mini groups within each layer. And then Murano's on the, the charm bars, just because they look so pretty on there. <laughs> it's like they look like they candy. Um, they do. They're so beautiful. Yeah. And then, yeah, so it's kind of like mini collections like that. So the Pandora Friends all together, the Pandora Twenties mm -hmm. all together. Um, two-tone I have all together and then like the open work two tones all together so I have a mental mm. map I know where everything <laughs> is and that helps me when I'm putting my bracelets together um, so I, I don't have to struggle I know which layer to go to and which little pocket to go to that's fantastic yeah the mental map is helpful I think and categorizing it by yeah their style I suppose is is a good way to go for those of you who are like me who are still trying to orient themselves in their organization of their collection. <laughs> I think that's stackers is, I, I recently got a big stackers box. I just haven't quite filled the whole thing yet. That's a whole nother YouTube video, I think, <laughs> so, of how that comes together. But don't worry, there is the end of year sale coming up. I'm sure it will start oh, to fill up. <laughs> I'm, I'm very aware. I'm very aware. I, um, I have, speaking of the sale, actually, I was going to ask you as well, do you shop in person do you shop in one store do you shop online or do you vary it up how do you shop for pandora um okay so i mostly shop online i know some people love going to special stores and they have like a nice kind of friendship with sales assistants mm -hmm. um i i don't know if it's because of running a blog but I always seem to know more information than the sales assistants I maybe I've just come across like really bad sales assistants I don't know um it might yeah I think some of them for them it's it is just a job maybe they're not that mm -hmm. into the jewelry um so yeah. yeah I I prefer online but yeah I I also am of a generation that does do online shopping I know some who are maybe a bit older they still prefer to go into store mm. but for me yeah yeah online rocks <laughs> that's cool oh that's fantastic I um during the pandemic I did a lot of online shopping and the great thing about it I think the online shopping was that Pandora lets you you know how they let you write a message on a card and they kind of you get the card and then you can write something um so I've got an example here. I did one which says, always in my heart. I think that was a Valentine's Day one. So I, I, I really appreciate that. But I'm actually super lucky because I, um, if for those of you that are in Sydney, Pandora Rouse Hill is amazing. The sales assistants there um, are fantastic. They do know as much about Pandora as you do, Yay. which is always helpful. So I've I found my little niche in Pandora Rouse Hill and Kate, the store manager there, is amazing. So um, I do do a lot of my shopping in person at Pandora Rouse Hill. Um, but when, when everything's in lockdown um, or if there's certain things where I just can't get to the store, I do get them online too. So I'm, I'm I, I do know both worlds of shopping. Um, I do find it fun to go into the store and, and browse too. Sometimes I, I feel like I need to see the charm in real life. Mm -hmm. um, I really had to see the me collection. Like your photos were super helpful as well for that because I was like, I don't know if this bracelet will fit or how many links do I need? Yeah. So that that um, was great to go in and, and try it on and see what it looks like against my hand. And yeah, so I found that really, really fun. Um, but yeah, you do need a good sales assistant team, I think, um, for a Pandora addict. Um, <laughs> that that's helpful. Um, where do you see your blog going next? Ooh, where do you think it's going to go next? That is a good question. Oh, <laughs> where do I see it go next? Um, well, hopefully, um, I will be able to continue with some of the main things, the reviews and the previews, and having uh, guest articles i really i really enjoyed that because it um it opens up different viewpoints i don't view the pandora community as a competitive community i think it's something that we can all share and learn from each other and mm -hmm. so i really like that aspect and having you on there with your journaling ideas and um themes that's been really nice so hopefully uh, a few more kind of instances like that with different things and maybe more mandora because i've mm. i've been seeing lots of comments from men 
Um, but you don't yeah. see many men like really out there in on Instagram wearing mm -hmm. Pandora or like, you know, being like um, very visible. So they must be there mm. as fans. So it'd be nice to see a bit more of that. Um, yeah, I, I think that would encourage a lot of the husbands to get on board too, you know. The more Mandora we see, the more we can share our collection with boyfriends and husbands and, and other male friends as well. Yeah, yeah. so um, my next review, well, not my next um, review, is probably going to be another autumn piece, but the uh, Mandalorian gift set I will be mm. doing as a Mandora review and my husband mm -hmm. will be the model in that. Um, <laughs> I actually ordered the bracelet in a bigger size than normal so that he can wear it or mm. I could wear it. Uh, he's not somebody who wears yeah. a lot of jewellery, but he really likes these pieces, and he is a, a big mm -hmm. Star Wars fan. So it kind of... I think yeah. the, the dark colours of this set made it more um, attractive to men. Mm. It, it doesn't have a... a a feminine look to it it's very much a unisex look mm -hmm. yeah I agree and with the May collection the ruthonium plated um, elements as well I think would go really well with a with those kinds of designs too I also bought my husband the black leather um, bracelet and he loves dinosaurs so all of those little dinosaur the Pandora Friends dinosaur T-Rex charm and then the um, the dinosaur that was the um, like Kibig Zirconia one, which was the friendship one, I think was perfect for that kind of um, design as well. So I think Pandora is branching into a more Mandora sphere. Mm -hmm. So I think that's definitely a watch this space for um, future designs and collections. And I think that's great as well. I, I remember when my journal launched on your blog, there was also a great article about how men could style Pandora done by a his name escapes me, but I'll put the link in. And, and that was fantastic. Yeah. Um, uh, I thought that, that really, that really inspired me. Sorry. Xavier. I can't remember his yes, account Xavier, name, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll link it in. We'll link it yeah, in. <laughs> yeah. So that was fantastic. Yeah. He had some great pictures. Um, mm, he really did. His photos were amazing as well. Um, so I'll ask you one last question because I know you're very busy and, you know, um, we're all short of time, but this is something that I've thought about for a while and I don't know if you had. Um, if you could design a new charm for Pandora to be released in 2022, um, what would it be? Oh. Mm. Well, I... So have you seen the Winnipeg charm that is um, a Pandora employee-only charm? It's... Um, yes, I have. It's based mm -hmm. on different characteristics of animals creating like a new animal so I think if I was mm -hmm. to create something it maybe would be along those lines forming a new creature with maybe um, I want to say more modern qualities but maybe uh, qualities that we've um, maybe built during this time this pandemic uh, mm. I, I can't think off head of what animals that would be, but like you know, <laughs> something like something that showed empathy, um, mm. um, family bonds. Because times when people haven't been able to see each other, like you still need that that bond. So I think I'd go along those lines of creating a, a new creature based on on mm. those qualities or as those type of qualities. <laughs> But well, I'd need, I'd need some pen and paper to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that sounds awesome. I look forward to seeing your design. It sounds so cool, a new creature. And I definitely, during lockdown, use bracelets to remind me of family or people far away or places that I didn't get to go to or have been to that won't, I won't get to go to for a while. So that would be great as a 2022 charm. If it was me, I think I would... I think I would design or not necessarily, it wouldn't necessarily be my own design, but I would love to see the Velveteen Rabbit. I don't know if you know that picture book. There's a picture book called the Velveteen Rabbit. And I absolutely, like you love cats, I love rabbits because I have two rabbits. Um, I love fluffy animals. I love all critters and creatures of every kind. So I would love a kind of similar to Disney, but a literature 
based sort of charm and because it's a children's picture book it links to childhood and it's just it's a beautiful story about how toys become real Mm -hmm. Um, and I sort of think that's the same sort of thing with the charms they kind of it could just be a silver charm but to you it's got that real meaning that real story behind it so I would love to see a velveteen rabbit charm that does sound a bit random um, but that is if I had to pick what I would want created into a charm I would love a velveteen rabbit because I feel like it would have so many different meanings for me Um, so yeah that would be my pick well thank you so much Dora for joining us on our YouTube Slater and I are super delighted to have you make sure you guys I'm sure you all follow um, Dora's Instagram and her Art of Pandora blog but make sure you subscribe to her YouTube channel as well because that's growing and developing and is just so amazing to see all the upcoming previews and guest hosts we're super lucky that we get to be one we feel so privileged Um, like you said before I'm blushing (laughs) we're so privileged that we got to feature on your blog and share a little bit of our Pandora story. So um, we look forward to seeing all the new previews coming up too. Very exciting. So thanks so, so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a great time together. Yes, it sure has. All right, everyone, thank you for joining us and we will see you again soon for Christmas previews and New Year charm bracelet designs and more journaling on the art of Pandora Um, blog as well. So stay tuned. Bye for now, everyone.